Well, hey, it's that time again. It's a Friday and you're back on the Joe Gardner channel. So today is really exciting because we're starting the new build series on the channel. So it's going to be a similar sort of thing to the drift trike build that I've done. But this time I'm going to be converting an old Biddy's mobility scooter into hopefully a 60 mile per hour weapon. So this thing is going to be insane. My plan is to take an old mobility scooter that goes super, super slow. Whack a big old 125 pit bike, four speed engine into it. And then when it's all finished, this thing should take off. Who knows, I might even have to fit a wheelie bar to this. Keep tuned, you're gonna enjoy it. If you're as excited as I am to see how this build turns out, smash subscribe now and drop a comment below. But for now, let's take a look over and see what we're working with. <laughs> This is what we're dealing with. Beep, beep, beep. Oh, nearly took you out there. So this is your standard mobility scooter that more than likely your nan or granddad are probably gonna end up using at some point in their life. And I wanna convert this to be able to go 60 miles an hour so they can get their fruit and veg super, super quick. So what are we going to have to do to do that? So these things basically run on an electric motor with a battery source. Um, they're limited to like four miles an hour in the UK, just because the laws that we've got that govern it. So because of that, they're really, really boring. And they have like no noise to them other than this really annoying beeping when you get backwards. No one likes that. So I'm going to have a little cut scene now. I'm going to rip all this apart take out everything that we're not going to need and we'll come straight back when I've got this thing down to the bare frame and we can start building something. Right, so we've got everything taken apart that we need to get apart. All that we really want from this mobility scooter is like the chassis and the front steering. The whole back end, we're gonna have to make a new frame to set our engine in. Wonder where the engine is. So here's the engine that we're gonna be using. And this is roughly where we're gonna want the engine to sit. So hold up a minute. I know this engine isn't central, but here's the scenario that we've got. This engine that I've gone for is a kickstart engine, so I'm gonna to need to be able to get to the kickstart, which is on this side of the block. So I'm thinking if I overhang the engine on this side a little bit, I'm gonna be able to get to the kickstart nice and easy to kick it over. And also, I've got the gear linkage on this side, which I'm gonna to have to run some kind of mechanism up here 
and hopefully activate the gears on the floor. So, what do I need to do? do, 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 do. So I think I'm going to have to chop off the ends of all these. Do, 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 do. I'm then going to make up a little bit of a box section frame here and then hopefully we'll be able to mount the engine on there somehow. So that is what we're going to do next. Let's see how this goes. So this is going to be a little bit tricky, this part. Um, I've got a plate on the bottom of my engine that I need to get some braces going along for it to sit on. So I'm roughly going to try, if I can, oh, iron up roughly where the engine's going to sit, just so it sort of looks level. Right, about there will be perfect. Right, I've marked where the furthest point back of the plate is. So now I can weld this in, weld the front one in and then sit the engine on and see how it looks. Right, so I need to blob a couple of welds on here and then we can see how our plate all sits. Right, that's all the welding done for a minute. I've basically got all the frame tacked out and we have managed to get the engine bolted in. So that is awesome. So next thing I need to do is get the axle set up. So to do that, I'm using these pillow type bearings and I'm literally gonna drill and bolt them into position and I'm gonna have it so you can slide them back to adjust the chain tension. I'm hoping this will be a lot easier method than um, when I've done the drift trike. So in the drift trike, I tension the chain by moving the engine the uh, engine mount was on like an elongated block so you could slide it forward. Well, I thought if I just drill some M10 holes into this, using these pillow bearings, I'll be able to pull them back. And if I've got it all lined up correctly, that should adjust the tension nicely. So that is the next little job to do. Get these holes drilled, get the axle in and get it cut down to length. So after a bit of fiddling off camera, I managed to get all the axle in and have enough clearance for the kickstart. So the issue I was having was the pillow bearings were sat on top, which made the tyres way too close to the kickstart, meaning you couldn't get anything over. So I put the pillow bearings underneath the frame. can still work in the same way, being able to pull the axle back to tension the chain, but they're just underneath. 
and in fact actually like that it gives it like a really cool hot rod stance so I'm really excited about that. So I'm just going to now weld all this up properly off camera um, and when we come back in part two I'm going to be setting up the drivetrain properly, maybe starting on the gear linkage and trying to work out how I'm going to route all the cables and everything. But stay tuned because there's going to be a few parts to this series and so far this thing is looking super, super cool. So go away, subscribe, watch some more of my videos and I'll see you in the next one.